let's take a look at the definition of an even signal and an odd signal. So again, these are properties that a signal may or may not have. If we are talking about a signal that is an even signal, an even signal has this property right here. X at negative time has the exact same value as the signal at that corresponding positive time. So just as an example, that means X at time three equals X at time minus three. X at time 55.1 equals X at time minus 55.1. No matter what time I choose, the signal has the exact same value at negative time. Odd signals are very similar, but just with a negative sign. They don't have the same value at negative time. They have the negative of the value or the amplitude at negative time. So again, picking a concrete example, X at time two is the negative of X at time minus two. So odd signals have kind of been flipped on amplitude about the time origin. So a signal that I give you might be an even signal. If I hand you a signal, you could say, oh, that's an odd signal. But some signals aren't either, right? They're not an even signal, they're not an odd signal, but you can always decompose any signal into a sum of an even part and an odd part. So I can always write X of T as an even component plus an odd component, and we'll show that as well. But first, let's just take a look at a few examples here in just a minute. Here's the decomposition we'll get to uh, at the end of the video, but first let's just go ahead and take a look at just some very concrete even and odd examples. So first let's do some even examples. So here is a signal X of T. And if I pick a time there, it has some amplitude value. And if I go to the corresponding negative time, which is right there, those blue dots are at the exact same amplitude. And that happens no matter what time that I choose. So this is indeed an even signal. What about this signal right here? Again, pick some time t. The corresponding negative time is that value right there. Zero equals zero, so those points check out. What if I chose that time t, this time right here? We'll go to the corresponding negative time, and I get that value right there. These are the exact same amplitude value, so it checks out. No matter what time I choose up here, the value at the negative time gives me the exact same value. So this is an even signal. Let's look at some odd examples. Go through the same exercise, pick a positive time t, go to the corresponding negative time. Look, this has an amplitude that's the negative of that amplitude. And that happens no matter what time that I choose. If I choose this negative time right here, at this corresponding positive time, I have the negative of the amplitude. I had some value here, it's flipped up here. So this is an odd signal. And that happens no matter what time that I choose. I've chosen just, chosen just two times here, but it happens for every single time t on the time axis. One more example, pick some time, negate it, you get there. These amplitudes are exactly equal, just different in sign. Pick that time, negate the time, that's that time right there. Again, these amplitudes are the exact same, just negative in sign. That happens for every single point, so this is an odd signal. You don't have to be even or odd, though. Here's an example where I pick a time t, and I go to the corresponding negative time, I negate time, and I get to there. Well, these amplitudes aren't the same, and they're also not the negative of each other. So this is neither an even or odd signal. So it doesn't have to have even or odd symmetry. Some signals do, but lots have neither. Let's go back to this even and odd decomposition now. On the previous chart, we had some equations for the even component, and the even component we claimed was x of t plus the time-reversed version of x of t divided by two. And we also had an equation for the odd component, and we'll put that here in a minute. Let's go ahead and establish that, first of all, this x e of t is indeed an even signal. And then let's also establish that the sum of the even and the odd does add up to the, even, the original signal like we claimed. So first, let's just establish that this is an even signal. To show that it's an even signal, I need to show that x of minus t equals x of t, e of t for all time. So this is what I claim x e of t is equal to. So let's go ahead and replace every t up here by negative t and compute exactly what 
x e of minus t is. So that's x of minus t. When I negate this t, minus minus is plus, so I end up with a plus right there. And then everything divided by 2. This is just a summation. doesn't matter what order I sum things in, so I can change the order. And now look at this. This is exactly equal to this, so that's x of e of t. So we've shown that the time reversed x e of t is equal to x e of t. So by definition, this is indeed an even signal. What about the odd equation that we had written down on the previous slide? Our claim was that the odd component of x could be written as x of t minus the time reversed version of x of t divided by 2. First, let's establish that this is indeed an odd signal by computing what the time reversed version of x o of t is. So I need to replace all of these t's with minus t. So I get that. And then let's go ahead and factor out a negative sign. So this is a difference. Instead of writing it as x of minus t minus x of t, I'm going to negate the whole quantity and write it as x of t minus x of minus t. Haven't changed anything, just looks a little different. The reason I've done that is now look at this quantity right here. That's exactly what I had here, which means this is minus x o of t. So time reversing this signal results in negating the amplitude. That, by definition, is an odd signal. So this is indeed an odd signal. Now, finally, we need to show that the even component plus the odd component, when added together, gives me my signal x of t. Let's see if that happens. Let's add up the even component on the odd component. So x e of t plus x o of t is the equation we had for x e of t plus the equation we had for x o of t. And look what happens. One half of the time reversed version of x minus one half of the time reversed version of x. Those cancel, and I'm just left with xt over 2 plus xt over 2. Half plus a half is a whole, and I get x of t. So indeed, this decomposition, the even part is indeed even, the odd part is indeed odd, and their sum does equal my original signal. So we can use these equations to decompose a signal into even and odd components as desired. So this is one type of symmetry a signal might have. It might be even, it might be odd. Another type of symmetry when dealing with complex signals is what we call conjugate symmetry, and we will talk about that in the next video.